Okay, I've tried to start this video three times now and I thought I would try something different because I know sometimes people like binge watch videos from people. I know because I do it. I was just doing it. I was just binge watching celebrity surprise fans videos and soldiers coming home videos. Uh, and uh, so if my eyes look kind of funny, it's because I've been crying for like an hour straight. But uh, the point I'm trying to get at is that I usually start uh, these videos with something like welcome back travel fans or welcome to the very unofficial travel guides. And I realize that if you're binge watching videos that that gets kind of annoying, like having to watch the same intro over and over and over. But I sat down here and I tried a couple different ways to start it and they all felt weird. So welcome back travel fans. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. It's another story time or, you know, maybe we should start calling it tangent time. I'm back here in front of the red sofa and I'm excited to share with you another story from my travel adventures. And this time it's gonna be about airline food. This is gonna be a weird story to tell because, uh, well, as always, there's a lot of different factors and there's so many different things I could tell you about uh, the experience. I guess I'm gonna call the video like the worst airline food I've had because it's in um, in recent memory this is definitely the worst airline food that I have had and uh, I feel I don't know I feel sort of weird about it because it was on Delta and I haven't had the best experiences with Delta if you watch my first class fail video that was Delta Delta was also the, also the airline and uh, maybe I should tell this sometime in a story time well, I don't know, It's not. there's not really a huge story around it, but Delta was also the airline where a guy next to me on the flight, while we were taking off, threw up, He, but he got it all into the air sickness bag, and the flight attendants on the flight wouldn't let him throw that away. For whatever reason, they made him keep that airline, that bag of puke with him the entire 10 hour flight over to Europe. And that is something I will never, never understand he got up and tried to throw it away several times and they ushered him back to his seat and made him keep it. And I, if you work in the airline industry and you have a reasonable explanation for that, please let me know because it's something I will never understand. All right, so those are some of the experiences I've had on Delta and there came a time where I promised myself I would never fly with Delta again. Uh, but then thing is, is it's very enticing when it's the cheapest option, obviously. So. Recently, I took a couple flights with Delta and uh, I noticed like huge improvements, improvements in the service, improvements in the quality of the machines, improvements in the food, and especially the flight to the States on my most recent trip where I visited my parents in Oregon. Um, I was like, wow, things have gotten much better. The service was good. The machine was, was it seemed very, very new to me. And the food, especially the food, and that's what we're talking about in this video, was really good. Uh, let me just show you what I got on the way there. Usually on long international flights, and this one was 10 hours, uh, you get like two big meals and then maybe a little snack or two little snacks. And this is the food that I got on the way there. Just a note, I always order the vegetarian meal just to be sure because uh, I don't like to eat meat or fish, uh, but I love cheese and that's something I kind of miss out on. I always miss out on the cheese and the ice cream when I order a veggie meal. I feel like even when I order a lacto-ovo veggie meal, which means uh, no meat, no fish, but dairy products, I never get the cheese and I never get the ice cream or very rarely. Anyway, so you're looking at the food that I got on the way there and like there was this like this little burrito or this, this um, you know, like curry wrap, which was fantastic. And then I also got a, just like a little, it was like a little pie with cheese melted on the top. Okay, so what am I saying? I did get a lot of cheese this time. All right, regardless, the food on my Delta flight on my way to the United States was nice. It wasn't like, okay, for airline food, this is pretty good. It was like, this is good. It would be good anywhere I ate it. And that pie and that wrap, like I would, you know, if I was in a food court someplace and those were offered someplace in the food court, I would go there and buy them. That's how good I thought it was. And uh, that's rare for Delta. Like I said, I just haven't had really great experiences on Delta. So I even, I think I even tweeted Delta to say, oh, you know, thanks for the great flight. Uh, things have really gotten better. And then on the way back, that's when it all sort of, that's when my opinion changed back to my old opinion. The food I got on the way back was just not good. This was the main 
for the first meal that I got. And I have to say, of everything I was served, this was the thing that was oh, the most okay. It was, um, well, undefined. There was no uh, description on it. It was kind of like a, a blob or like a, I want to say like a patty, like a veggie burger, but it was more like stuffing. It tasted and had the consistency of stuffing. So it's probably a lot of breadcrumbs in there and maybe it was, you know, I really don't know. It didn't taste, it didn't taste bad, but it was nothing, nothing I would ever want to eat again. Nothing that like, if I was like, so you could have this or this hockey puck of stuffing, I would definitely not take the hockey puck of stuffing with um, carrots and what was on the other side of it, spinach or something. No, no thank you. One bonus, however, and you know, I have to be fair, one bonus was uh, with that meal, I got some ranch dressing and we know what a topic that is for me. And for the snack, uh, I'm pretty sure everybody else got ice cream and I got an apple and a small piece of, a small roll, like a piece of bread with no butter or any sauce on it or anything. And then um, a slice of lettuce, a slice of tomato and a slice of cucumber. That was my snack. Then it gets better or worse, depending on how you want to define it. My, my lunch then, or actually no, no, it was breakfast. So my breakfast, I didn't pay attention to what everybody else was getting. This is what I got. And check out the presentation. I mean, it's like an orange juice and a banana and then this thing just plopped on top of it. And what was inside there? It was a big, I mean, it was like this big, but the bread, I mean, it was like dry bread with spinach, two thin slices of tomato on it, and then a tiny, like a little thing like this of tofu. That was the meal. That was what I was supposed to eat for breakfast. You know, flying is transportation. It's supposed to get you from A to B, but it's all these extra things that airlines do on top of it that will make you want to be, you know, like a recurring customer. Those are the things that create the, the relationships or the, the bond, you know. On my way to the States, I was like, yes, all right. I'm cool with Delta now and I would actually, you know, look for uh, a Delta flight now instead of avoid it. But on the way back now, it's the other way around again. And I feel bad. I mean, I feel bad for the people working there because the service was fine and the, the, the jet, the machine was in good shape. Everything uh, was clean and seemed new and they, an amazing uh, selection of entertainment. Uh, the only time I think I've had better entertainment was on my best flight of all time on Emirates Airlines. But I feel like even though it's just transportation and food shouldn't really, or some people would say food shouldn't really factor into uh, your opinion, I totally disagree with that. Because if I'm sitting some, if I'm forced to sit someplace for 10 hours and I'm paying you, you know, like a thousand dollars for that, then the food needs to be better than what I got on my flight back to Europe. And here's something Here's a theory I have. And this is another thing that if you work in the airline industry or, or if you have some insider information and can confirm this or deny this, please write it in the comments below. I'd really like to hear it. And this is my theory. I think that the food is better on flights from Europe to the United States because it's then from European chefs or a European kitchen or European companies. And I, you know, I don't want to open up a can of worms here, but I just feel like the kind of food that we eat here in Europe is overall on the average, just a little bit higher quality and cleaner and a better, yeah, it's just a little bit better <laughs> than what uh, I would, let's say the average North American is used to eating. Uh, and I know, you know, <laughs> don't write some kind of insulting comment in the, in the comments below because you know that I'm not trying to be mean. Um, I feel like uh, here in Europe, we eat just a lot more fresh food. People go shopping a lot more often. They cook with a lot more fresh things and that's the kind of things that we're used to. And that's why, um, I don't know, I feel like that 
uh, flows into then the food that ends up on the airlines. Because if you fly like with Lufthansa or Swiss Air or something, the food you get on those flights is fantastic. But the food you get on a Delta flight inside the United States or from the United States is, I mean, you saw it. That's the comparison that I have. And so is, the, is that the reason that the food then on the way back to Europe was not so great because it came from a, an American kitchen? You know what I mean? Uh, that's my, that's my uh, theory because otherwise I really don't understand how the, uh, how the quality can fluctuate so much. I mean, it wasn't like a small difference. It was like a huge difference. You saw the pictures. I'm not making it up. You know, it's not, it's not like an opinion. Well, I mean, I, it is an opinion, but it's based on facts. And the facts I have are the pictures that I just showed you. And I would assume that you would agree with me as well, right? Whew, okay, made it through. Only a few tangents. And uh, yeah, you know, I do have another question for you. If you've made it this far, um, I'm not gonna do a secret word, but I have another sort of thing that I want you to answer. And that is, if you, are watching this video uh, and it's not like the first video you watched when you started your computer or started YouTube, what was the video you watched just before this? Like what were you doing? What were you sort of like, you know, diving through that led you then to this video? That's what I'd like to know uh, because I just find that process interesting and maybe it will help me also reach some new audience. I don't know. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'll be back next week here in front of the red sofa for another story time with uh, tangents and unnecessary information, I guess you could say. And I would be really happy if you're here too. Also, I'm pretty much done with the videos from my recent Mediterranean cruise. So uh, Disney fans look forward to some more Disney vlogs coming up because I didn't finish the vlogs from our last Disney trip at the beginning of this year. And if you're a cruise fan, please stick around and uh, hang out with me, watch the videos, watch the Disney videos, because I think there's a lot of things that um, cruise fans will also like about visiting Disney World. And if you've never been there, or if you haven't been there recently, or if you haven't been there with me, then I think it, uh, it makes sense to watch the videos because then you might, it might open up your eyes to a whole new world. And that would make me happy too. See you next week.